Welcome back to the Spoonie Stitcher channel. I'm Shannon the Spoonie Stitcher. You're inside the Stitchery and I'm so happy you're here today. This is Film Friday. I love Film Fridays, especially in December. Today we are talking about Christmas movies you may not have heard of. And if you have, please let me know in the comments down below. These are not in any particular order per se, although you might tell that I might like one just a bit more than another one. Um, but all of these movies are wonderful and I have to watch them all at Christmas time or it's not Christmas. So these are all classic 30s, 40s, and 50s movie. I do love classic film. It's why I started Film Fridays. I want to tell all of you about classic film if you don't know about it. And no matter the audience, I have gotten people who've been like, I've never heard of that. I want to see that. So I also will try my best for this particular episode. I usually don't do this, but it is Christmas. So um, I'm going to try and tell you down below in the description box where you can stream it or watch it. So fingers crossed I can find all of them because they're all amazing and you need to see all of them. <laughs> the first one is 1945. Christmas in Connecticut. If you have not seen this movie, it is such fun. So quick, tiny, mini spoony tale. This movie got me through the flu. <laughs> when I was younger, I felt terrible and it was three in the morning and I just wanted a feel good movie and TCM or the equivalent of such, I think it was TCM, was on and they were showing Christmas in Connecticut and I don't know, just watching this movie just made me feel so much better. Okay, so end of Spoonie Tale. Now, let's talk about the movie and why it's amazing. So, the plot of this movie is a war hero was stranded, shipwrecked, basically, with his buddy for months, weeks, we're not sure. And um, the only thing that got him through when he started recuperating in a, um, a medical camp, a nurse would read to him from Elizabeth Lane. She was a food writer who would really lovingly um, talk about food and her house and the country and her baby and how she handmade everything. So he would love listening to her describe how the food is ta tastes and stuff like that because he couldn't eat anything because he was still on a, um, he had to get his stomach adjusted again. So this is the only thing that made him feel better and yeah, okay. She does have a bit of a crush on him, um, the, the soldier. And the nurse has an idea. She saw that the editor of the company who makes the magazine was somebody that she nursed his granddaughter back to health. I don't know. She nursed somebody back to health and he remembered her. Okay. She requested that this soldier be allowed to go to Elizabeth Lane's place for Christmas. Have a good old country Christmas. And so... Uh, somebody has to tell Elizabeth Lane. Okay. You find out Elizabeth Lane is a fraud. <laughs> she doesn't live in the country. She's not married. She doesn't have a baby. And she can't cook. All of the recipes come from her best friend who runs a sweet little Hungarian, um, like bistro downstairs and he gives her all these recipes and she writes about them and she gets to taste them and yeah so he helps her keep up the secret her boss doesn't know this nobody knows this except her um like her publicist or something i think i think that's what that guy's job is and the guy who has a massive crush on her who is a total we don't like him Anyway, I'm sure the actor is a lovely man, but he plays a terrible person. So anyway, they all get an idea to fake the entire thing. So the awful person who has a huge crush on Elizabeth says he'll marry her and he has a house in Connecticut in the country. Okay, so she agrees to marry him just to pull this off so she doesn't get fired not to mention she'd also be you know blasted for being a fraud all over town it's chaos it's wonderful it is such a comedy things go wrong things it is such a good comedy it stars 
Barbara Stanwyck as the wonderful Elizabeth Lane, Dennis Morgan as the handsome soldier, Sidney Greenstreet as the boss. You'll also know him from another Christmas film. If you know which one that is, tell me down below. And if you're the first person to tell me, I might shout you out in the next Film Friday. But of course, my favorite character in the entire movie is played by S.Z. Cuddles Sakal. Everybody has to love Cuddles. He's so sweet. Every character he plays, you just think that he's playing himself. I believe he really was this sweet. I bet he was. I bet he was a big old teddy bear. Just, oh, I love Cuddles. And then we also have Una O'Connor as the wonderful maid and Reginald Gardner as uh, the snob. And <laughs> look at this man. I don't have to tell you his real name is Reginald. You know it. I'm sure you look at him and immediately go, oh, Reginald. Yeah. His parents, his parents did a good job naming him. Anyway, um, I highly, highly recommend this movie. I love Christmas in Connecticut. It is one of my favorite movies. It is one of my favorite movies. Okay. Not even Christmas. It is one of my favorite movies. It's wacky. It's romantic. It's funny. It's got, you know, food stuff. I love movies about food. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but I do. And, um, it's not a musical. You're welcome. Okay. None of these on this list are musicals, but they do have a bit of singing in them, but they're not musicals. 1947, The Bishop's Wife. Now, a lot of people have heard of The Preacher's Wife, but in 1947 was The Bishop's Wife. It came first. Technically the same plot, but not quite. So The Bishop's Wife is about a bishop who wants to build a cathedral and he prays to God that just help him. He, he needs help. Things are going wrong. This isn't going well. Christmas isn't going to go well if, if this cathedral isn't built. He's so focused on the cathedral that his wife and his child get a bit pushed aside. Not quite neglectful, just, um, you know, they're second to the cathedral. And that's a little sad. Um, especially because their daughter is adorable. She's the cutest little thing. Oh, I'm sorry. The bishop is played by David Niven. Yes, that David Niven. Um, so four stars right there. And then his wife is played by the gorgeous and talented Loretta Young. Love her. If you've never seen The Farmer's Daughter, we're going to talk about that on the channel at some point. That is a fantastic movie. And then the angel is played by Cary Grant. Cary Grant, he's handsome, he's dashing, we know it. Anyway, he plays the angel who comes to help the bishop. He does help him, but in the most unconventional way, and it actually starts to make the bishop mad, but he's like, let me do my job. The bishop doesn't really let Dudley do what he was sent to do. He said, you asked me for help, let me help. He knows what the bishop needed help for, but the bishop didn't know what he truly needed help with. It's romantic. It's a little bit funny. It's sweet. I love this film. It's wonderful. It also has um, Monty Woolley as the old professor. I love Monty Woolley. He's so fantastic. If you've never seen The Man Who Came to Dinner. <gasps> oh, that is that's a great film. And he is fantastic. Anything with Monty Woolley is great. But anyway, and then Gladys Cooper plays um, Mrs. Hamilton. The scene with Mrs. Hamilton and Dudley, if you do not cry, you are not human. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I love that scene. I am getting teary just thinking about it. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're moving on. New movie, but go see that. I'll try and find it down below because everybody needs to see The Bishop's Wife. 1947, it happened on Fifth Avenue. Now I am very happy. I've heard more people talk about this recently and I'm so happy people are discovering it because it's such a fun film. What if the richest man in the world had two houses and he alternated between them and a homeless man figured out how to live like the rich man for a certain time? That's what happens in this movie. A homeless man figures out how to solve his housing problem 
by staying in an abandoned mansion for a certain amount of time. He even rigs the lights so that security won't figure out that he's there. He is smart. <laughs> he is very smart. He has the cutest little dog named Sam. And um, he is played by Victor Moore. It's fantastic. So the rich man is Charlie Ruggles. Have you ever seen the Disney version? Oh, I'm sorry, the first Disney version of The Parent Trap? He was grandpa. He's also in The Ugly Dachshund. You know, I could do an entire film Friday on Charlie Ruggles movies. Should I do that? Let me know. So, um, I don't want to give too much away, but the girl in the film is played by Gail Storm. Yep, that's her name. <laughs> she is the millionaire's daughter, the, the richest man in the world's daughter, who ran away from school and she shows up in her own house and the homeless man and another man that he meets, but I don't want to give away who that is, thinks she's trespassing. So she figures out what's going on. She overhears them and she decides to pretend to be, you know, a battered child and stuff. So they'll let her stay. And she just wants to know more about what's going on in her dad's house. And it is so cute. They have more people show up at the house and I'm not explaining it well. I'm really sorry. It's a very cute, very quirky comedy. It's sweet. You know, it's back when love stories were simple and sweet and cute and I, I love this movie. So if you've never seen It Happened on Fifth Avenue, I highly recommend it. 1955, We're No Angels. There are two movies that I know of, both called We're No Angels. Please, please make sure you get the date right. 1955 is the one you want. The other one is completely not safe for kids and nothing like this Christmas classic. <laughs> Three convicts escape to Devil's Island and they hide out in a little store merchant's um, shop. They pretend that they can fix his roof. They end up fixing everything. The merchant is played by Leo G. Carroll. His wife is Joan Bennett, and his daughter is played by Gloria Talbot. Those are names that were very popular at the time. They were all in big successes. Gloria showed up a lot in like Perry Mason episodes, and Leo G. Carroll, well, he was in everything, so. Um, but let's talk about the favorite part, the convicts. The convicts were Humphrey Bogart, Aldo Ray, and Peter Ustinov. I have an entire book where I wrote down quotes from this movie. It is so quotable, and most of that is due to Peter Ustinov, because Peter Ustinov is a genius. And um, this is a fantastic movie. It is, it is said that it is Humphrey Bogart's only comedy. I would object. I believe that Sabrina is kind of a dramedy, but if you're talking about a like belly laugh comedy, then yes, this would be his only comedy. Um, and he's funny. He's funny. He's got that dry humor that works so well against Aldo Ray's kind of manic humor and then Peter Ustinov's more distinguished and uh, witty humor. So um, it's the three balance so well. It's just fantastic. And then of course every film has to have a villain. Yeah, the convicts are not the villain. The villain is of course Basil Rathbone. Oh yes, the evil uncle. I won't give you any more than that. So the main thing is the convicts start to fall in love with this family and they want to help them and um, it's really sweet. The relationships between the convicts and the merchant's daughter is really sweet. And I mean, all of them. If you've never seen We're No Angels, I'm so happy to say I found it on Pluto TV recently. You can go to Pluto TV. I'll try and link it down below. Pluto is free. And um, I will see if any of these others are on their list. If that is, I will link it down below. But I highly recommend these movies, y'all. This is one of my favorite lists I've made for you yet.
Thank you so much for being here today. Please like, share, and subscribe. If you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. It helps me, it helps the channel, and um, it lets me know what you guys want to see. So, thank you so much for being here today. Which movie have you heard of is your favorite? Uh, do you want to check out? Just talk to me in the comments. I love your comments. So, remember, life happens, yarn helps, and Spoonies can stitch it up too. Merry Christmas. <laughs>